Look out, footy's back, g'day, I'm Simon Garlic. Wait, no I'm not. I'm James Clements, this is the AFL Today Show. I'll tell you what, it is your favourite one-stop shop for all things Aussie rules footy, isn't it? I'm joined by two of the worst people I know. <laughs> It's what Alex Donnelly. Between? Alex Donnelly in the uh, stats boy. What's going on? What's gentlemen? changed in the last twenty four hours? What did we do to him yesterday? We were the best people in those. We now, came to work. Yeah, he's, he's not happy anymore. I just think the look of shock on your yeah. face when I said what I said yesterday was hilarious. <laughs> uh, they are a pair of local weirdos, full blown footy nuffs, and some would call them AFL experts. Uh, but this is our Thursday night team show for the old AFL Today Show, uh, where we go through every single game, look at all the teams, break every single game down. Preview, predict, Stats Boy throws in some stats. It is yeah, a chockers, been. chockers show, though. So let's get into it. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get around AFL today across all the social platforms and get around and wherever you get your podcasts. Or Stats Boy will fight you. Because 40 is back for round 23. Oh, geez. That means there's only one more week after this week. Yep. What am I going to do? Finals. You it's all good. time with your it's family. All good. Yeah, you're still fine. <sighs> still fine. My family friend. hates me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. The baby tried to cut my finger off today, so like it's it's well, over. Well, oh. well, the dog. The dog's fine. Yeah. yeah he's, but he's he's cooked anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. He's like, it's going all right, man. <laughs> just you're, you're both just cooked. We're both going back to sleep, right? I'm yeah. like, yeah, I wish. <laughs> right, let's do some news before round 23. Uh Interesting point, no matter the machinations, and this is like the thing that you had to kind of get bashing home this week, uh, no matter the machinations of the top eight, stats boy. Yes. Uh, there will be footy if uh, there is, in fact, actual you know Victorian teams hosting games. There will be footy in Victoria at the MCG if there is a home fight. Like, it will be at the MCG. It won't be down at Taxpayer Park. No, uh, which is good. For so we're games. just looking at you, Geelong. <laughs> Basically, at this point, which is all pretty interesting, the AFL's gone into the contracts. If there's only one final, in week one, two or three in Victoria, it'll be at the G. Don't they have to have like 10 finals in five years in the first three weeks at the MCG or something? Is, something it, like, is there a rule? Yeah, it, I it's a contract thing. They got, the, they got the granny anyway, so Victorians, calm down. Uh, basically, this is a precursor to all the Geelong fans going, why don't we get a home final? It's because your thing's very small. And yeah. It's bigger now. Like we it's gave bigger, you all the money. It's not big enough because I mean, they sell it out every week. We gave you all the money anyway. It's taxpayer park. Settle down. <laughs> I mean, the Swans did get to move their finals from the Olympic Stadium back to the SCG. Yeah, that's true. Nice. Anyway, that's cool. Good job. Uh, it is fascinating though because we are about to go into round 23, obviously. Yeah. And the machinations, as I mentioned, Stats Boy. <laughs> you love that. Uh, the simple idea is <laughs> with two games remaining for all these teams, only, like there is actually still Sydney, I believe, could still get somehow jumped if they lose two. They could yeah, like, we can. They can finish like fifth. That yeah. would be. They hilarious. can like drop out of the yeah. top four if they lose both their games and they get skedaddled with uh, percentage and gear. Uh, but outside of that, it's all up in the air. Well, they're the only team locked in for finals right now. Exactly. Which is it's never happened in, by round twenty one, let alone let alone round twenty three. That's unbelievable. It is absolute chaos. So we're gonna dig into this week. Yes. I'll tell you. Uh, before we do, Tim English, he was injured. He also signed a five-year deal. He was sad and then he was happy. <laughs> oh, no. Who now will win the amazingly useless Ruckman sweepstakes? I'm just saying, he has not been that great this no. year. I bet, I've said it for the last month. I know, but he will. He's actually I've just noticed it because in my Supercoach team, he's been stinking it up. He was never going to go back to per go to Perth because his partner recently moved yes, back did call to did Victoria. Call they were never going to go the two-city living situation again. What was this? Huge. That's West Coast dodging a bullet, I reckon. Oh, uh, that's a bit harsh. He's fine. Nah, he's still should good, but he's, he's fine. Rock but really, come on. Well, uh, we'll serve you up a sweet, sweet dice of pitto if you need him, West no, Coast. I, how dare you compare <laughs> pitto to Tim English? <laughs> CJ. He re-signed with the Hawks Street. Well, a three-year extension, yeah. which is kind of cool. Leo, uh, our resident Hawks fan, was he loves CJ, but he says he's a bit injury prone, so he, he's not happy about that three-year extension. Yeah. But he's a good player, so that's okay. So... Three more years for Thriller as well. Yeah, which is oh, pretty cool. Love that. He deserves it. Agreed to terms. Yep. Now this is uh, a setup, right? So a lot of this idea of like, all right, extenuating circumstances, you know, for contracts, whatever. Like Dan. So Dan Houston is also basically saying, uh, maybe I don't want to go to Melbourne. And so mm. everyone's like, well, contracts. Why would he want to go there? What do they mean anyway? And then obviously the big stuff that's been happening this week, Petrarca. Obviously, this breaks. It's like, you know, he's still going to the five years to run his contract. Uh, this kicks up into, a, you know, a vaguely, all right, let's just call it an incomprehensible Kane Corns article, which is par for course when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes right to the man with the biggest head. 
biggest head in the business and the <laughs> pair of the smallest eyes. But basically saying, do the power players have too much power? And, I uh, think they do, yeah. I think that's ridiculous because they quite clearly have, well, they've got enough power to sign contracts. If yeah. you don't want that power, if you don't, if you want to keep the power, sign shorter contracts. Simple as that, right? That's true. But at the same time, I feel like we should be mitigating contract length anyway. I've, this has been a big thing for mine for ages. Yeah, <laughs> for as they long need as to I stop doing massively long contracts. This is where other sports get into big, big, big trouble, right? Going ten-year contract. Here's this, this, this. football it's, club that he supports is about to, to yeah. enter a black hole of doom because yeah. everyone signed right. through twenty thirty. Yeah, it's crazy. As and they're on fat money. As cutthroat as the NFL is. Like they have fifty people, we have fifty one people, fifty two, whatever, fifty three, on the uh, on the roster. We'll get there. Fifty four. <laughs> keep going up. Well, it could be fifty five. And they do sort of limit, obviously, with that amount of people and the moving parts. Basically, yep. you need to go right. Well, you only have X amount of guaranteed money. Then just keep chopping and changing, chopping and changing. It's much more malleable. Whereas the NBA is very hard and fast guaranteed yeah, it's contracts. Blah 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 mm. blah blah. Uh, the AFL just going. Oh, we'll give you a ten year contract. That always works in the favor of the team. Because the salary cap by the yeah. second time it goes around. I don't know yeah, why a player would sign that. But no, in those contracts, it's built in. It's like, you're, it's not you're getting 600000 percentage. You're yeah, getting 6% of the salary, salary cap. Of course, that's how it works. But at the same time, by the time you come around for another CBA, you could be like building and building and building on yeah. stuff. Who knows? But then also, I hate when a player's like, I want to go to Hawthorne. You know, if, if they're from yeah, interstate. Yeah, I don't like that. They shouldn't and I'm just decide like, that, yeah. North Melbourne offered us pick seven. Hawthorne are giving us pick eleven. You're going to North, see ya. Yeah, that's. I think AFL players have more say than other so sports, yeah, which, annoy, which annoys me a little bit. If you want to go to a city, yeah, you get it. You, okay, I want to go to somewhere in Melbourne. You don't get to say what team. Yeah, I'm I just agree. saying I agree. shorter contracts would fix this. And yep. uh, I don't know. I think with the longevity of players at the moment, I feel like it wouldn't be that disastrous. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Either way, good stuff. Uh, the truck stuff has been pretty fun, but that was the point I was sort of making there. Dan Houston, second guessing going to Melbourne now. Mm. Uh, my, maybe just had a little, little peek under the hood and just went, oh, yeah, just nah. The, the cult, everything's falling apart there. Why would like, you want to really good? Bloody Imperial Pints. Yep. Yes. Hang, hanging out. <laughs> Easy Adelaide access to pubs. the CBD. <laughs> <laughs> Parks. I don't know. Churches? <laughs> isn't that, isn't that uh, but the deal has fallen over as reported by uh, Jay Clark, which is pretty interesting. For interesting. The as I stuff. said, go there to was, North Melbourne instead of Melbourne. Oh, I also, him, but I don't think he's going to come to us. You're a 27-year-old. It was always going to be interesting to see if Melbourne needed that sort of player. We sort of kicked that around last week. So anyway, we'll see what happens in the offseason. Jack Payne, he's out still until the finals, at least with his foot injury. Uh, looks like Josh Tracy and Sean Darcy. They oh, wait, were, we need to have a look at that. They the were rumoured to be that. out. Now we can have a look at that. We can actually look at that. Yeah. So, uh, we do actually have no Tracy and no Darcy. I don't Ooh. think they made the plane anyway. It was no, they didn't. So. Uh, Good friend Eliza Riley. Outside of this, your man Harry Shears was confirmed. I out, called it on the super, for the season. I called it on the Supercoach show. I said I'm very worried for the rest of the season. I would just my Supercoach team's cool. Wrap him in uh, cotton wool, like you said on the Supercoach show. Literally, he's the best player at our club. Just didn't put, I tell do you whatever. to go down there and yeah, like whip just, some yeah, cotton wool, with, like a with big bu- bit of bubble wrap? I may, just, I might have already done that, but uh, I'm happy. Just put him on ice. He's an absolute freak. So as long as he's good for next season, I'm happy. Yeah, like it's not going to make a difference if you no. finish 17. So he's out, but the, well, the warlord comes back in. So that's a that's a good replacement. Still not going to win Rising Star, right? No. <laughs> Sticking out west though, West Coast coaching search. Mm. A little bit more news popped off today about this. GNC Recusa just went, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, Ash Hansen went, nah, I'm good. And I saw everyone, that. everyone's like, hey, Ash, did they even ask you? He's like, nah, nah, they definitely did. <laughs> Considering the uh, umbrage that he is uh, garnering at the moment. That was a great combination of words. Like uh, the umbrage that he's garnering from Carlton fans at the moment. Uh, some of the best, I think, you know, I love outraged fans. They're the best. Twitter is just great for it as well. Tell Vossi to get off the sideline and coaching vibes and get Hanson out of the box. I'm like, <laughs> I like I, it. I actually said those right. exact words about Joel Longby. And you know what? Show. He got back to the box. They started that, winning. That's true. That's true. I actually don't mind it. Like Craig McRae, stop coaching on the sideline. Actually, was that tweet for him? Was it no, <laughs> AJ, I, AJD I, or whatever you I honestly, yeah, he's got a Carlton burner. <laughs> yeah, I honestly wouldn't know who's on Carlton stuff. I know that Greg Stafford is somehow Melbourne's Ford coach because every week Demons like, fans are outraged. Oh, there you go. Nice one. All right. And then the final awesome bit of news yeah. is that my beloved Anthony Kudafidi. <laughs> Wait, this is real. For Melbourne Lord Mayor. That's not real. He has my vote. Wait, do I get to vote in there? How do I vote? Uh, no, you got to be in the city of Melbourne. Ah. I don't know. 
Not sure entirely how that works. Well, let's have a look. How what, do you vote for Lord Mayor? I just assume that... Melbourne uh, Lord Mayor. I just assume that Cooter's uh, entire like <laughs> ticket is essentially <laughs> Suvers from Suvlaki Hut for Yeah, he used to work for them, yeah. One of the great ads. It's the seen worst ad. Cooter, it's Suvlaki. Cooter versus a, the gorilla. The gorilla's like dancing with him. <laughs> All fish and chips will have to be bought from Ange Christou <laughs> from here on out. And Carlton memberships for... Are mandatory for all of Melbourne. Yes. So. <laughs> Carlton just have a million members. <laughs> I assume that's what Cooter's platform is. I'd vote for him. Oh my I knew Cooter. Is it, what, wouldn't it just be the central of Melbourne and now Icon Park? Yes. The first thing he said was the time to act is now. I'm running through a brick wall for Cooter. Yeah, let's go Cooter. <laughs> So Kuda also, look, you know, he's one of the great Instagram followers as well because he has like very, very uh, old dad. He's got dad vibes, but his sons are like, you know, very active and like very yeah. into hoops and footy and all that sort of stuff. But he's also got like his paid partnerships. Yeah. And like, he's like, we had a great time here today at the thing. And it's just like, he always does paid partnerships. Yeah. And it's amazing. He's got like a sports drink. He's got like a fitness program. I was going to say, it's like following Michael Bevan on Twitter, who my, just big notes. My challenge next year points. for the AFL Today show is that I will follow a Kuta fitness program <laughs> the entire season. <laughs> Are you going to look like the Adonis himself? I'm going to be out there going, oh, I am the Greek Adonis. Check this out. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I'll pull a hammy in the week ginger one. ginger Adonis, they call him. There you go. Anyway, I'm voting for Kuda. I did Vote one, think- Kuda. We were actually, to be honest, I'll put my hand up. The <laughs> AFL Today Show. The AFL Today Show is, is going. volunteering campaign. To be your campaign manager's Kuda. <laughs> we will do paid partnerships for Kuda. Yep. Suvers from Suvlaki Hut, Fish and Chips from Edge Christo, Carp Membership's mandatory. We're all getting on your fitness first or whatever it is. <laughs> Away we go. We are here to stump for Kuda. Look, I'm happy to like- He's got some good points. I'm ready to know. That's going like, son. would be good with Pickett. I just want to know what he's standing <laughs> on the uh, e-scooters is. That's, yeah, yeah. That's Bring start. them back. They're, they're fun. Anyway, right, let's do it. Let's do some game previews for round 23. Essendon, Sydney, Friday night, a blockbuster uh, at Marvel. Interestingly yeah. enough, the Swans are somehow nine and a half point favourites. Wait, so what do you mean somehow? Well, it should be like 409. Oh, I don't know about that. After the team news, you know, let's see why. Okay, let's have a look at the team Well, person. the over-under is 175.5, which is a bit, screams a bit shootout vibes. Well, that's under considering the last two between these two have flown way over. Yeah. Well, the last game was absolutely was awesome. electric. Yeah, yeah. 131 to SCG, yeah. as they just, it was aerial ping pong. 131 to 101, I think. Yeah, yeah nice. Aerial ping pong at its finest. In for the bomb rays come Sam Wiedemann and Archie Perkins. Out goes Nick Cox with his bonged head. And Alwyn Davey. Um, for the Swans, Ooh. Chad Chudley Warner's out. Yeah. That's, but his brother's, that's not a good replacement. His brother, well, he's Warner. all right, but. Corey will in. be the sub. Shout out Corey. And Corey will be the sub. Okay. Uh, Robbie Fox is also out. And Robbie Malik Fox was hurt out. last week in the game. He got cleaned mm. up on the half forward flank and he was holding his back for the next 20 minutes. Like, yeah, that doesn't look good. Mm. Nice one. All right. Well, <clears throat> give us some stats, stats, man. Uh, the last four meetings in Melbourne between these two sides have actually been decided by less than two goals. I, I think until probably that last meeting, so many of your results, uh, Sydney's results against SM were just so close. Swans won by 30 last meeting, but that didn't tell the full story. It was like really close for three and a bit quarters. No, it was, it was, was three close, quarters. No, it was close for like the first 15 minutes each quarter. And then this one's yeah. like, that's ah, cute. Check this out. They're like Essendon genuinely played really well. Yeah. And, uh, and then Sydney just ran over the top of them. Uh, nine of the Essendon's last 10 matches have gone over the total points as well. So you got uh, the Dons are ranked 14th in defense. So I'd be going over uh, that 175, yeah, I mean, especially yeah, under right. the roof at Marvel. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, I am fascinated by this because the big question is obviously, is there any life left in the Dons? Because technically there is. They can still make the finals. Technically. There's a little bit of life, yeah. If they lose this game, it's all cooked. Does Dyson Heppel want them to lose so he gets a farewell game? Oh, yeah. That's my other big question. Kind of... No, I'm joking. He he, he's, a good, Outward, he's a good team, man. Outwardly, he wouldn't be saying that. No. But if they're like two goals down with five minutes, he goes, like, it's cute. Nah, he's a big Don's man. I think, he, he, I think he'd just rather than make the finals yes. Yes. and try to force his way back into the team. Maybe just trip someone over on the way out. Yeah, uh, do what Charlie Dixon, just punch someone <laughs> in training. <laughs> yeah. The Essendon edge is the question mark here. Like, can they actually throw That's it up? That's not a thing. Take it to the Swans. <laughs> Will they be able well, to? Well, the thing is, because Papley isn't playing, like the spice is taken out of it a little bit because he was the one talking talk and chat after the game <laughs> can't swear uh he, he he kicked four and had 20 so he backed up you know everything that he said and it was just what is it sam draper just throwing a couple of errant elbows a couple mm. of, like just late shots but it's like oh yeah like who at essendon when they're running at you are you scared of uh i'd in, be scared of a few yeah in they general? <laughs> no just like if you're an afl player and you're just like no, nah, not really. They've got a lot of small guys. Jake that's Stringer, true, yeah. And that might be it. Yeah, whereas if you've got like Luke Parker barreling at you yeah. or something like that, or 
uh, who else? Probably Hayden McLean at full blast. Yeah. Like, oh, this is going to hurt. Hello. Is there? It's going to hurt you. Pretty and small. He's small, yeah. Uh, he gets tagged. James Jordan will tag the ever-loving crap out of him tomorrow Oh, okay. Because he was awesome in that first game earlier this year. He'll he probably get two votes in that game. Yep. Uh, Stringer has 11 goals across four games. He had, yeah. w- he had two massive games, one at the MCG during COVID and then one at the MCG in 2022. Yeah, three of the last four he's kicked three plus. Yeah. I think a couple of them were in junk time. I had a look at some of the highlights, but a lot he does score yeah. goals against the Swans. you got Errol as well, 24, and a goal he averages against the Bombers as well. He's really good at Marvel against Essen and Errol. Mm. This is a great Friday night footy. It is. But the weirdest part is it feels like a Saturday night footy game. That's Why? because the last four times at nights they've played on Saturday oh, nights. That's go. exactly right. I was going to say, where's your logic there? into but my brain. Fair it's enough, like, this yeah. is a Saturday night game. Yeah. Why is it on a Friday? Just pretend it's Saturday uh, night. Because this, at the then time. You get, then you get two Saturday nights. When the floating fixture came out, this was like first versus like third or fourth. Yeah. Yeah, that's, gee, that's tough. That is a good, this is Couldn't a good game. Couldn't be me. Oh. Uh, this is though, so this is Saturday night footy. The problem is it's we've got a showdown on Saturday. Yeah. Showdown should be on Friday. What are we doing here? Yeah, we talked about Why that actually the showdown with showdown on, uh, standalone. during the week. Yeah. Give me a standalone showdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either way, I still think the Swans have enough, even without Chad Chunley Warner, which I don't like as much now because he was so, so good in that first game. Yeah. But they still have Heen, man. They have got Parker and Mills back now. Yeah, every, I, I saw a lot of media this week going, oh, Callum Mills, the move, it hasn't been great. His best game, clearly, it wasn't a high bar in fairness, was last weekend. He moved to the halfback flank yeah, during good. the game. Yep. He was very good. It's that, you know, it's that they left the uh, uh, left him outside and rusted him overnight, and the rust has slowly, slowly, slowly come off. This is what his fifth game that back. That is racist to us redheads. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's back, ready to go, and Cheeks will lay a thousand tackles in the midfield. Lovely. Our man Cheeks. I still can't believe our man Cheeks hurt his cheek. Yeah, that was. <laughs> What are the chances? Yeah. I don't know. Do you know his uh, sister was the number one draft pick for the Gold Coast Suns? Yes. I actually did know that. Yeah. She's, she's, a, she's a beast. Yeah. Very, uh, very Sydney by 18. Alex. Sydney by four goals. Sydney by 20. We're all pretty similar. I, yeah. I just, I think it would be similar to the first matchup. Three I quarters, think, that's really close. Sydney, I think the Sydney 18 is exactly where I land. Yeah. Where it's yeah. Because it's like, it's close, it's close, it's close. Sydney kick away. Yeah. Just don't this game's it. either torturously close for me and annoying or the Swans come out and just – because they're sitting in a flat after the Gold Coast thing last week and the Swans put seven goals on in the first quarter. Nah. Ah, this is over. Like Noise. Essendon, I know they lost, obviously, but they kick one goal nine. Any other day they probably would have won. So no, because I'm staying. They played well last three quarter week, time in that game. Expected score. Gold Coast which should have been thirty up. Oh, I know, but then you go at the end of expected score. One goal. Gold Coast last. was still in front on expected score. Anyway, and um, the scoreboard. They'll be all right, uh, Essendon. I think in this one. Any other Carlton fans out there as well? There are supercuts of the Essendon yeah, one goal nine a, of the fourth quarter. Are you quarter. saying Carlton fans just if, to you, if you need feel a good? little bit of bright spark <laughs> in your life, and I do. Like I've got a baby trying to cut off my finger. It's just it's all just a mess. <laughs> Carlton stink. They've got no players left. Uh, watch I'll, some. I'll hopefully some watch highlights. the Dons yep. kick one goal nine. Now watch them go and win this game and storm into the finals over the top of the Blues. No. Saturday, 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 <laughs> Saturday. Gold Coast versus Melbourne. Wow, this is a dead rubber. Uh, yeah, it, it could have been good, but sixteen no. and a half point favorites are the Suns of People's First. Where is that? Twenty eighth. Above the 28th north, parallel. That's very right. Very north. Uh, so, therefore, they will win this in a canter. Uh, 167 and a half is the over-under. The ins and outs for this one, not as uh, not as disastrous. Like, the, all the talk oh. about Melbourne this week was mm. just so just, ah, oh, Clary's gone down. They've lost track for this season. Alex Neil Bullen wants out. The only change they've made is Jake Bowie comes in for – Clary, and that's it. That's obviously a big Clary drop off, but yeah, for this they still, don't have Steven, they still don't have Stephen May. No Stephen May. Took Miller comes back in for Alex Sexton, which is pretty good. Uh, the Suns should win this. This is up north. This is exactly the moment, though, where you go, oh, it's a Melbourne team who no one expects to win. What do they do? Win. They stupidly win. Mm. And their fans are like, ah, oh, we wanted the draft pick. Yep. I just don't quite see it happening. But either way, give us some stats, stats, man. Sure. Uh, Melbourne have won the last 11 straight against Gold Coast. I had to read that uh, a few times. I was like, surely Gold Coast have got to win. No, they haven't. They've played a lot in Darwin, uh, but Melbourne have won their last three matches at People's First Stadium. So I think the last, yeah, a lot of those home games for Gold Coast were in Darwin. So because Melbourne used to play in Darwin, so they're really good in those conditions, but they just always beat them. This could be the difference in this one as Melbourne, obviously, like you said, looked really bad uh, the last couple of months. Eight of the last nine Gold Coast home matches, as we've talked about all year, have gone over the total points. They average 50 more points still there. So what's the over under? 167. That is going to easily clear that, I think. Can Melbourne keep up? 
No. What do they average? They uh, can't keep a score. What do they average? 76. They can get 76 and uh, Gold Coast will get 100. So there you go. Well, Easy all over. Of, all of Melbourne's entire approach the last few weeks is just dragging to the mud yeah. and hope for the best, right? Yeah, like but, it's up, but it's up there where Gold Coast just pinging around like there's no tomorrow. Well, Melbourne scored, what, 64 points in the 60... No, 51 points last yeah, week. Yeah, they've been... And it was 59 points the week prior against the Dogs. You would have thought it was a wet weather game, uh, but that was not. Not great. Mm. 83 against the Giants, yeah. They don't really defend at home, Gold Coast, though. Like, especially Darwin, but at home, they just attack, attack, attack. So I wouldn't be surprised if Melbourne doesn't get a matter when they score enough points. Yeah. All right, the big question, do Melbourne have anything left in the tank or no. does the 28th parallel main, remain mostly undefeated? <laughs> Because they did lose uh, the they one They did lose game. one, and then... It's to Brisbane, so it doesn't count. It yeah. doesn't really count. Yeah, no. Yeah, because they're on the same... Well, they're also they're hardened also... by the 28th parallel. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they technically... Ha that rule is still in place. Uh, Melbourne don't have anything left in there. Undefeated thing. against non-fellow 28th parallel. There we there go. We go. Pa Wait, what is the parallel in Brisbane? Non-28th <laughs> parallel dwelling teams. Brisbane's well, above the parallel. Brisbane's above yeah, the parallel. Yeah, I know, but I'm trying to so say what count. it is. Yeah. Therefore, Gold Coast win by 40. I've got Gold Coast winning by 32. I'm going Gold Coast by 35. Oh, we're we're all so similar the first two games. This is gross. <laughs> GWS Frio, this is a huge game. Saturday at 1.45 p.m. at NG. Uh, 163.5 is the over-under in this one, which feels about right because you've got Frio. Yep. Pretty good defense. In fact, many would say, in fact, everyone should say because it's a fact, <laughs> they are the best defense yeah. in the AFL. They are, yeah, since... well, at least they are ranked number one. I don't know if they are the best at the moment. They always crumble in the last with their defense, but they are the best ranked defense. They'd be two games clear on top of the ladder if games ended at three-quarter time. Yep. Do games end at three-quarter time? No. No. Oh, okay. as, um, so so North, North, North would be the eight if it ended at halftime on three-quarter time. Frio coming off the 62-73 nah, loss to the Cats last yeah. week, and GWS with a famous win. Yes. Because it's a big, big sound <laughs> over the Lions. Um Two contrasts in these two teams, right? You've got a very, very solid Giants team that I called at the start of the year the, as the best team in the comp. And uh, <laughs> boy, did they then prove me wrong and then right. They're again. coming back again. <laughs> is, that, is that team? Thanks for that, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Uh, Lots of ins and outs. Ins and outs. How did Harvey one. Thomas get dropped? I oh, know he's a good He's good. Yeah. Well, there you go. GWS, Harvey Thomas out. Xavier O'Halloran and Gru, Max Krzyzewski. Oh, the moon. McMullen comes in, so does Kieran Briggs and Caniglio. So that means they're keeping Lockie Keefe in so they can try and absolutely towel up Liam Reedy and uh, yeah. old mate. Um, Briggsy and Caniglio is well, massive. Completely, yeah, Luke Jackson. Uh, Reedy does come in. It's making making his debut, which is kind of fun as the, they're trying to like roll out the two bigs. He was talked up in preseason as a really good ruck, so we'll see. That'd be yeah, exciting apparently he's just a straight-up ruckman. Mm. Next to uh, Luke Jackson. Uh, Nathan O'Driscoll also in Tabiner and Carl Warner go out. I will safely say Matt Tabiner will never play an AFL game ever again. Oh, jeez. What are you good against Matt Tabiner? He no, has had a crap I, year, I but think he's, he's still a good player. Nah, because da he's got now he's got How Reedy he? and Jackson and Darcy in front of him. He's gone. He's like Done. a third tall anyway. Done. Finito. Oh, he's Alex Alex has been quits. out here just sipping on his haterade <laughs> all, all afternoon, apparently. How many, oh, jeez. he has had a pretty crap year and he's had lots of injuries yeah. so. brought Done. to you by Haterade <laughs> Hater, I like if that. that's Cooter's drink I'll drink it <laughs> yeah no he's much too positive yeah Cooterade 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 would work I actually found out that Ange Christo lives down the road from me so oh I'm stoked you're gonna you're so gonna stalk him now <laughs> yeah I don't stalk. I'm not weird. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. I, I find it strange that your <laughs> brain straight away goes oh I stalk him I don't know you just stalk you just him. Like you, got, you yeah. got way more stalk <laughs> oh, okay it. Oh, no. fact, I'm not oh, going. No. I'm not going. Oh, the no. fact that I have I walk my two children on their way to <laughs> primary school and uh, daycare past his house. It's just I reckon thing. you purposely live there <laughs> because thing. Ange Christie was there first. I, I wish I'd known. He does have a <laughs> sick car collection. Uh, I wait way too long. <laughs> anyway, Giants stats stats man. Yes, uh, the Giants have won four of the last five home meetings, including a seventy point win last meeting last year, which I forgot about against the Dockers. The Dockers as well. Never won a game at NG Stadium. 0-3, and, and they lose by an average of 58 points there. Oh, now, the Dockers that. are a much better team this year, I think, but that is not no, They not made the finals sign. two years ago. Yeah, they made the finals two years ago, but that's not a good sign. 58-point average winning, uh, losing margin there. Very bad. Uh, how many does Jesse Hogan kick? Four. Four. That's all I'll he say, does, though. That, I'll say that's four. His yeah, baseline he's, of this his baseline's four. He's Roll got 20, four. 25 goals in his last six matches. So he's... Yeah, we're just with the Coleman. Can we give him the Coleman already? Wait, 25 and he's, like, he's averaging four goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. insane. In his last six. He's, he's just unstoppable. Andy Brayshaw at his uh, busted jaw, 33 disposals in his last four. Yes. Not bad. He's been really good. Looking very handsome. Uh, yeah. Always confusing me with him and Bailey Banfield. I mean, one Bailey of them, Banfield is way more handsome. One of them has got to wear a headband. 
That no, I don't think they look alike. Do you think they look alike? He's definitely got head headband like yeah. vibes. If he just grows it out a little, yeah. That's why Jaden Hunt's Imagine been really bad. His he aura. Go check out the short about auras. <laughs> uh, if Bailey Banfield was wearing a headband, I'm like, he'd kick. I feel like you could rock a, a headband. I can rock a headband. I'm just saying. I feel I've like been known to, to you rock a lot today. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, the big question is: Do fraud mantle <laughs> oh, prove fraud to be man. fraud mantle or free mantle or flag Basically, mantle? Do they have like they? If they win this, they're playing finals. Mm. If they lose this, it's still up in the air, right? So, do fraud mantle have what it takes to no. take it on the road and win? I or, do not think so. If this was at home, yes, but away sure. they're cool. tsunami. Yeah. You know what I hate though? People go, oh, they can. If they win this, they control their destiny. That's the exact opposite yeah. of like controlling your destiny because you, you haven't won this game yet. No, afterwards. And is... even then, you don't control your destiny because your destiny is already written. That's the exact idea <laughs> of the destiny. Your destiny was to do what happened. Yep. You can't. What? <laughs> I hate it. It's a very anyway. backwards thing to say. I'll agree with you on that. Just, just, just go and win the thing. Yeah. Go pop a couple of billies and talk that one out. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to go GWS by 32. 37. 20. We're just all the same. We're usually so different in the tips. This is weird. This sucks. Are we are we different later on? Let's have a look. I've, we... got, I've got a big one later. Don't worry. Oh my god, you got a couple of big ones. Nice. All right. I do. Or one at least. Grand final rematch Saturday yes. afternoon. Collingwood versus Brisbane. The Lions are somehow eight and a half point favourites at the MCG. What was their record at the MCG stats, boy? Quickly go. Uh, two and fifteen in the last ten years, and then it's like two and nine, I think, in the last those four or two, five. And those two wins have come against the D's. Yes. Nice. So are they're calling with, are calling with the D's? No. Oh, interesting. Uh, the, <laughs> over under, moment. the over under is 168 and a half, which that is a fascinating over under, actually, just because you look I at the I'm, Pies offense, mm. and you're like, how do they keep up? But then you look at the Lions offense, and you're like, but you're at the MCG. Do you know what to do here? I'd be going under, I think. It's a fascinating setup, though, because it's always going to be in the back of my brain for the Lions and offense. Uh, yeah. Like, what are they going to do? How mm. is it going to work? Yep. Are they going to be on their feed or off their feed? Simple as that. Uh, give us a couple more stats there, stats. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go through the teams first? Or do you want to go through the Eric Hipwood's back. Give us a couple of stats. Oh, a couple of stats. Uh, yeah, Brisbane, they've obviously won nine of the last 10 matches. I am worried about them at the G. They lost to the Hawks last year. They've just they've had so many random games where they lose at the G. Pies did win earlier in the year, but that was when Brisbane were struggling at the Gabba. So I do think, yeah, Brisbane deserve, deserve favorites. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, for the Pies, in comes Will Parker. Out goes Joe Richards. Mm. Sure. That's a right. tough one. Uh, in for the Lions, Harry Sharp and Eric Hipwood. Hipwood is an interesting one because obviously, what they sort of have played around, they've moved the magnets. Well, they put him full back for a little they bit. They put him full yeah, back for a second. No but now that yeah. you've got Harris Andrews and Ryan Lester, be in fine Kosa, up they'll forward, be fine yeah. up forward. Yeah. He, Chuck, Chucky Cameron, and Joey Duckett. Uh, Hipwood averages two goals a game at the G. They've also named Will Hoskin Elliott at centre half back. Mm. That is not going to work against Brisbane's I think forward Brisbane line. Brisbane's going to be okay in this one. Jackson Pryor, Henry Smith out for the Lions. The big question is, what's worse, a premiership hangover or the one that I had after the Boobies <laughs> lost to Serbia? Yours. <laughs> it was. Uh, that is a great question. Uh, pretty bad. You're the only one that can answer that. I'm still back in gym. <laughs> Mine was pretty bad, but to be honest, I did back up that next day. You and came into did work. An AFL Today yes, show. Yes. So. Might actually be the premiership hangover because they're probably not going to make. You've the performed finals. better than Collingwood, I'd say. So I check, that yep. checks out. Yep. Uh, because if you think about this premiership hangover, it's a pretty tough one. But we we do see them. Like it happens you, all the time. You yeah. run your Geelong list last year. Exactly, yep. Geelong last year. You run your list completely ragged. Uh, you get hit by the injury bug once Less, or twice. Uh, motivation, boom. I think, is a little bit bit of a part of it. Craig McRae's uh, empty coach speak is uh, you know suddenly they're just, still talking about that stuff. Yeah, he was talking about it today. Yeah. What was his uh, his point? Was I was talking from a frustrated place rather than a disappointed disappointed place. Disappointed place. It, it's a fair point. I, I like live, I like that. Yeah. You know what's like the, the TV show? The Good Place. The, the <laughs> frustrated place is where I live. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just always got, hanging. I, the I, angry I like both place. of you. I, I reflect <laughs> heavily on everything I do, and I'm disappointed that I went into frustration mode versus disappointed mode. Frustration mode. That's a that's a fair that's, a good argument. That's though, how I at, live the, my at the end life. of the day. <laughs> frustration <laughs> mode. Hater uh, mode. Hater mode. Yeah. All right, any other vibes on this grand final rematch? Because I think you look at those teams and you just – the Collingwood forward line still just gives you just the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, Unless Jamie Elliott there, pops there off could be that three. Bobby Hill going, ha-ha, remember last time? Ha-ha, I'm going to get yeah, you imagine, again. Imagine Bobby Hill kicks. Lucky shots could pop up and actually have like the game of his season He's been crap. for the Pies. That's Joey, it. I got some stats about the players. Joey Dano has got three-plus goals in four of his last five meetings with the Pies at the G. Pendles as well. He loves playing against uh, the line. He's been – 
so good. Like, I, is he ever going to retire? I don't know. Let's 20s. rank all 400 of his games. Go. Uh, Dreadlock game, uh, pigeon game. Pigeon game, yeah. All-star game. Yeah. Uh, the top 10, uh, wait, no. The top 280 are the ones where someone was reminded that he used to play basketball. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say there's at least 300. Do you know he used to play basketball? <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah, 26 disposals and six clearances, the average is against the line. So not bad. Not bad. Good size. Mm. Alex, your tip. Collingwood by three points. Collingwood? Really? Vibes. Weird vibes. Oh, MCG. Just, MCG. MCG and maybe Premiership uh, in their head a little bit. No, not that. Just Brisbane, just the stumble because oh. they've, they've spent so long chasing that they stumbled last week and maybe it's like, uh-oh, we've tripped. Are you saying that as well because it helps Sydney on the ladder? I could not care. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It probably actually doesn't matter for Sydney. Um, yeah. I am tempted to do a similar vibe, but I think Brisbane had their wonky loss last week. And I think they come back there here and they look awesome again. Yeah. Uh, they might have been drinking their own bathwater a little bit last week. It's like, <laughs> we're premiership favourites. Check this out. And then JDO is slapping around the back of the head. Uh, Brisbane by 14. Brisbane stats by 14. Uh, I'm going Lions by 18. Actually, I'll be there. I'm really excited. Side note, perfect time. Twilight Saturday. Yeah. I'm in the long room, actually, on Saturday. It'll be very fun. Too many tins. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, don't remember to put your pie wrapper down yeah, so you don't get yelled at. Last time yeah. I was in there last, last year. year. Oh my god, they're very posh in there. It's not I want me. to save the next game until after this other one. All right, because St Kilda Geelong. Yeah, fair call. Uh, the Cats are ten and a half point favourites at Marvel against the Saints. This is a wonky, weird game. This screams Sunday twilight. Yeah, this should be the three. Yeah, did they, no, no, this should be the four forty. Did they Sunday. think this is like the prime Saints Geelong match? Well, no, from they like put, years ago. No, they put this up against the showdown because like, ah, no, I was going to watch. It's fine. Sure. Yeah. One sixty three and a half is the over under, which feels ambitious considering mm. the Saints just go, hey, check this out. We're going to drag you in the mud. Yeah. Uh, which is what? Second best defense in the comp. Exactly. Give us some stats, stats, man. Uh, Cats have won six of their last seven games this year, but have lost the last two to the Saints at Marvel. They don't play at Marvel very often, the Cats, because obviously they're a big club. So you got a lot of games at the G, a lot of games at the Cattery. They very rarely play at Marvel. So I don't know if that's going to have an impact. The Saints have also covered the line in four of the last five games against Geelong. So they have a pretty strong record against I have an important stat. Guess which game on Saturday night is the free-to-air game around Australia? Of course it's this one. Probably this one. No, but it's because... Why are Channel 7 sending their commentary team to the showdown? I agree, but it's because like the Victorian... Teams always get the, the yeah that, that <sighs> slot. So, but I agree, it should what? be the showdown. Yeah. Does Does Alex understand that more people live in Victoria? Yeah, than yeah, yeah but I understand. So. I think there's more interest in a showdown yeah. than St uh, Kilda. I'm not agree. arguing that it's not a better game. Mm. I'm just saying that uh, Channel Seven's like, where are the people? Eh, there, we, we, who's yeah. going to watch this one? Eh, maybe these guys. It might only be slightly more people. But it's actually such a bad game. St yeah. Kilda Geelong that you're like, oh, yeah. maybe more neutrals would just go, Port Adelaide, that's awesome. Let's go. Show yeah, down. I agree. It is done. It is absolutely watching the should show. should be down. on Friday. Like, I remember we that's had this discussion said, last year. We'll uh, talk about yeah. it again. We're still talking about this other game yes. first. <laughs> uh, Forgot about that. <laughs> point being, the Saints put up, what, 99 on Richmond last week. Cats it's won Richmond, in a yeah. pretty weird game against Frio. They played really well against Frio. They were good, especially that first quarter. So what happens? What happens? This is going to be a fascinating one. I don't know. The teams, teams let's yep. have a look at those because we currently have uh, Mateus Filippo still out. He's got the runs. Jeez. Wait, really? Is... Oh, that's – do they even have to say that in is the that media? for two weeks? <laughs> like, oh, <dang>. yeah. <laughs> he hasn't got up. He got up. He still hasn't got up. Uh, in comes Hugo Garcia. <laughs> He's got porcelain issues. Super coach, still super have coach, superstar, Hugo Garcia, making sure that Jimmy doesn't have a donut, you little ripper. <laughs> I've got a donut. Angus McLennan is out. Uh in for the Cats, oh. Mitch Nevitt and Gary Rowan. I don't mind both of those. Out Good. goes Tanner Brune and Zach Tui. That is Uh There's tough. some big outs, yeah. Uh, I still think the Cats offensively have a little bit too much for this Saints team. Yeah. Uh, the big question is, can the Saints play spoiler? Because I kind of think Ooh. this is a wonky matchup, as mm. you've pointed out, Stats Man. Yeah. The Good idea record, awesome. that this Saints team with nothing to play for, w- would you – Imagine them just reveling in the idea of just going, ah, just throw a bit of a spanner in Geelong's works. They've had a good reckon? rivalry against the Cats in the past, so I reckon it'll be in the back of their minds, but they just don't have the class. Geelong have just built so nicely in the season, so yeah, I don't they, think they have they a chance. Might, they might have a flat one after the big effort in Perth last week before yeah. the free kick against West Coast next week. Mm, no, nah, I, I don't think Jim's the Galaxy have a chance. I'm like oh. I'm trying to figure out what have I said before? I want to tip the funniest outcome. This isn't funny. It's just like, oh, yeah. No, it is a, bit, it is a little bit funny. Counterpoint. The Saints aren't funny. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, there's nothing. F- the cats aren't that funny either, apart from them being a bunch of surfing Jack traders. Higgins, Jack Higgins is funny. No, that's, he's that's not. About it. He's funny because he's so dumb. But the outcome he's of the Saints, funny. the Saints randomly winning just a pointless end yeah, of season game. That's not funny. It's like, like winning three straight to end the year, you're like, why? And the Cats just going, what are we doing? <laughs> we could have got finished top two. What? Are we, oh, why do we cook that Saints game? I'm tipping the Saints. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's go, Eric Banner. I'm on your side. Oh. <laughs> Saints by six. Oh. Chaos. You can't be doing that. I love that. Look, I fully expect Geelong to win. I don't <laughs> care about that one. But anyway, Alex. Uh, Geelong by 33. I'm just, I'm going with the normal result here, but it honestly wouldn't shock me if Ross somehow clamps this game and it's 58 to 40. Yep. Oh, uh, I'm going Geelong by 20. I think Danger's going to have another big game. He looks, uh, which I'm going to touch on can't later. Can't do it two weeks in a row. You've got the vibe on Danger. He's, uh, yeah, there's a stat that I forgot to say. 20 plus in 14 of his last 15 at Marvel. So he doesn't mind playing there. The tall timber of the Cats forward line, though, just really does worry me against like, mm. um, what, Wilkie. He's over right. Miller, good, but, yeah, etc. Don't have enough Jezza, height. Shannon Neal, and Holly Ollie Henry listed across that forward yeah. line. That is that's chaos. That actually that's a really that is very really, tall, really yeah. tall yeah. Uh, full forward line. <laughs> anyway, Sunday. No, well, well, go back. Oh wait, no, the showdown. I've the show, it. the biggest game of the weekend. So much Vic bias, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, there bloody, is a- bloody VFL. Jesus. Don't mention the. It's because I the skipped over it to come back to it, and I just tripped myself up. Port Adelaide hosting Adelaide. In showdown number 57. Nice. Oh, did you, I, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. He's just it's made, about there, isn't he? He's just made up. Anyway, Port Adelaide Power, 12 and a half point favorites at the Adelaide Oval, 7.30 on Saturday night. This is going to be a belter of a game. The over-under is 170.5. The <clears throat> Crom. This is the 56. Jeez, oh, I was we, close. Was we did talk it out when they had the last showdown. <laughs> yeah. It was like, because I think it had been in... Odd number, I yeah. think that one, because they were so evenly split. Yeah, we're just so excited. Let's just make a 57. <sighs> Give us some stats, stats, man, before we get into the teams. Yeah, the Crows, they absolutely love the showdowns lately. They've won the last three straight showdowns, all as underdogs, and by an average of 36 points. They were, they've been massive underdogs in lots of these showdowns, and they still smoke them. And they've also won four of the last five. That other win was the Jordan Dawson, uh, his first ever showdown. And he kicked it after the siren, if you guys remember that really curving yep. arching back after the siren. Power have won six of the last seven matches, but they're just always crumbling the showdown. It's, it's a bit of a worry. If they win this, they are a good, good, good crack to finish top two. Yep. Uh, like basically it comes down to like they, Geelong, GWS, depending on the results. Uh, but Port have to win this game. They will be doing so without Todd Marshall, who was out with a, was it a concussion that he copped in? That was his... Uh, Todd Marshall yeah. was concussed, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Ryan Burton comes in for him. In for the Crom, Lachlan Gollant. Out goes Gallant, Big yeah. Tex. Gallant. Big Tex. Gallant. Gallant. Yeah. yeah, that's close enough. Big Tex goes out with his uh, bung eye. Lachlan Gallant, I actually don't mind him. He's from my club. He, he takes some big hangers. So. Port Adelaide Power is listed forward line. Yep. Darcy Byrne-Jones, mm-hmm. Asaba Radigalia, yeah. Willie Rioli, packs. Travis Boak. He finally kicked the goal this year. <laughs> yeah, I know. Charlie Dixon and Connor Rosie are listed. Why is Rosie at forward pocket? Know, you can just swing Jason Horn Francis there instead. But the, mm, I don't know. Like that sort of worries me. But the flip side is Adelaide's is Dan Curtin, who kicked his cool. first goal. He's, last been, week. he's been all right. Thriller. Noise. Isaac Ranking. Scary. Sam Berry. Yeah. Fogg. Noise. And Rochelle. Ooh. Well, this that's has been substantially the- better, right? Oh, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Dix, Charlie Dixon has been very average. So, yeah, I'll agree. Fog with kicked five last week, didn't he? Like, yeah. He Thriller kicked looked three. Awesome. So, oh, why am I tempted to tip the crumb? No, I'm not doing it. I can't. I'm tipping the crumb. I, I'm can't, tipping the- I can't stand I've tra- the crows all year. I've, I heard, I the heard the forward line. I've changed on the forward line, nah, and that's I'm, it. I'm holding strong. I'm holding strong. Uh, the big question was should the showdown have its blockbuster yes. standalone spot? Yes. This either should be a standalone Saturday night or a standalone Friday, Friday or night. Or a Thursday night. Thursday night. That would be beautiful. Thursday night great. to kick this, off the This screams the Thursday week. night footy. I love this. I love the showdown, uh, even though I forgot to uh, read it out. But this, <laughs> like these sorts of games and like this one with Rivalry. the Crows oh. coming off like an awesome win over the Dogs, uh, despite like <clears throat> weirds up and ups and downs. We talked about this with Simeon yesterday. Uh, like they're so hard to get a read on. <sighs> they are. And the power had been like And that, they've also they come out of- and said this is their grand final. Good. Yeah, they will because they will. So hopefully they get on the tins ne- on sun- on Sunday, the Crows, and forget that they have to play the Swans next week. What Great the, kid uh, matchup as well. What was the grand final they lost to Richmond? Was that 17? Yeah, yeah. That was, that's when they've, they haven't they recovered since then. Yeah, tough one. I suppose about so they're going to hope it was more like the 97 grand final? Yeah, or 98. Yeah. yeah. Either then, or. Anyway. They got right. the prison bars. I was mentioning about the kids. So Very there'll cool. be a nice kit matchup at least. That's nice. Oh, that is great. The prison bars. Prison bars are sick, I'm going to yeah. go the Crom by three. 
Two. Oh, you guys are getting sucked in. I don't care. They've won the last three. We're going I've, with the form. I've been the biggest uh, Crows truth all year. I don't want them to break my heart again, so I'm tipping the power. Fake fan. No, I'm not. A, I'm not Fake a fan, fan anymore. They're, they're they're a joke. They are a joke of a club. Where are they? 14th or something? You are the sh- North Melbourne of fans. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> 15th, bloody 15th. So I'm going power by five and watch the Crows win because I've tipped against them. So what's going? the funniest outcome? Yeah, Crows winning Crows is the funniest 100%, outcome. 100 because again, it's a dead rub or dead rubber for them. Yeah. Like they're just like we're just playing for pride. That's important. Yeah, against the power because they're the pride of South Australia. Oh, yeah. They're the mighty Adelaide <laughs> That's Crows. Their song. Yeah, well done. Uh, I like that. Rochelle did come out and say that the power fans have like two teeth between them. So yeah. I don't know. He, might... he said that. He's either going to yeah. get three possessions or kick four. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go kick four. <laughs> Sunday. Back at Marvel, Dogs North. How is this not in Ballarat? Oh, because I guess they're playing in Ballarat round 24. But either way, they still, play this, Ballarat. this should be the Ballarat game, no, not the play, GWS they game. They play uh, interstate teams in Ballarat because sure. there's two Melbourne teams. 44 and a half point favourites of the Dogs against North. This is the oh. uh, the creamy happy run home for the Dogs. Yeah, but this is- Until l- round 24. This is like the layup, the layup no, win. The Dogs layup last home. year was West Coast. Tricky. Yes, and they lost. Who Over called it? Over under okay. 178 and a half. I called it last year. Yeah, you did. Oh, no, I'm not awesome joking. I just said I can't remember. <laughs> Get under your skin. Oh, and like, I just need a couple of like <laughs> victory laps for that amazingly <laughs> awesome call last that year. That was good. That was good. Uh, the over under 178 and a half, I'll be flying over with that. North's defense, as yep. we saw last week, gave up over 110 points to West Coast down in Tassie. Oh, that's just. Despite weird things happening in Tassie, there is a lot of high scoring games there too. The be dogs fair. have the offense to absolutely yeah. put the boot into teams, and they can do that with North. Uh, as we've seen the dogs time and time again this year, right? They have uh, these really random games where they just go, hey, check this out. We're going to put 160 on your head. <laughs> and you're like, oh, geez, that was a bit rough. Uh, they have top 115, 106, 91, 124, 91, 133, 88, 100, been so 149, good 195, 110. <clears throat> uh, Despite last week's lackluster showing against the uh, Crows, this has to be the bounce back, right? Yep. Stats boy, give us some stats before we do the team. I really don't want to do these stats as a North fan, but the Dogs, they've won the last six meetings by an average of 52 points. Hmm. Uh, was 17 points earlier in the season. So North, we put up a pretty strong fight. Huh. We're much better at Marvel than uh, Tassie. So obviously lost to the Eagles, but we've covered uh, the line in the last six matches at Marvel. Always put up a pretty good fight there, in, always later in the season, never early in the season, but obviously had some close losses there. So I think this is going to be a lot closer than the line suggests. But in terms of the ins and outs, I'm very, very worried about Sheezel being out because he just he he's like the Bont's version of for North. He just has to put it put North on his back and does everything. So I'm very worried that he's out. Interesting stuff. Uh, <laughs> How is that the, being? It's like the crowd going ooh when, when someone hasn't said ooh. anything that bad. Anyway, for the dogs, pretty bad. <laughs> in comes Joel. Fra- These are the extended benches for the Sunday games. Of course, yes. Joel Frazier, Thank Harvey God Gallagher, for my super coach team. Arthur oh, Jones, yeah. Alex Keith, Jack McRae, James O'Donnell. Hello, I'm James O'Donnell's <laughs> dad, Simon O'Donnell. Uh, Nick Caulfield, Tim English, and Riley Garcia are all out for the dogs. Uh, for the Roos, out goes the Sheasel. That stats boy just had some. Mean things to say about his facial Jeez. features. Oh, nah, it's no, mainly man. mainly the bottom. I, I yeah. Sure. On. Dylan Stevens is back, stats boy. You're <laughs> beloved. <laughs> I Stevens. hate Dylan Stevens. Zach Ever, Fisher. Oh, do, I, no, Zach Fisher. Right. What did Dylan Stevens ever do to you? Can he get a touch and actually hit a target? That'd be nice. Hey, so. I remember the bomb from 55 against the D's in the qualifying final. Good yeah, stuff, Dylan. Yeah, he's not playing. Importantly, for us. George Wardlaw. Noise. Yeah, I'm happy, very the happy. With that. I would have put Wardlaw on ice for the season with the concussion. He would have just been like, let me play. Right. He's a psycho. He would have yeah. been, would would been headbutting something like Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> and the final one is Callan Dawson. Callan Dawson. He's, He's a good back. defender. I'm That's happy cool. with that. Uh, fascinating game for the simple idea of like the dogs at Marvel, they feel awesome. Mm. And uh, anywhere else, you're just like, ooh, question mark. Does this North team have any chance, Stats Boy? Do no. We- I mean, the big question could just be, do we trust the dogs to no. do their job? I Do we trust the dogs? Yes. I if it, Against other teams, you go, oh, the dogs might crumble. They very rarely crumble against North, as I said. Oh, as they'll I win this, but they'll it'll, win be this like, comfortably, it'll be like, it'll be like, that cut will be like, yeah, that was gross. I do think it could be close for like the first two or three quarters, which a lot of North games are, and then they just kick away, but they'll win this pretty comfortably, I think. You've got uh, Cody Waitman, averages 4.5 goals against North. Oh, like, every time we play him, we're like, oh, we few. actually covered the tall forwards. Oh, wait, there's the flea just absolutely tearing us up. Uh, Alex was talking about Colby McCurtry. He's had 30 plus as well as six of his last eight games with no sheasel. Genuinely 40 plus touches is on the yeah, cards, especially with bad. the amount of inside 50s the dogs are going to get. Yeah, Alex is uh, having a look at his betting account right now yeah. as we speak. 
Really Maybe not nice. 40, but definitely 35. Mate, I'm still getting over getting on him to have 35 two weeks ago at six dollars. He had 17 at quarter time. Oh, yeah. And then he gets 31, and then he had 37 last week. It's like <laughs> just... he checks if you bet on him. Oh, <sighs> god damn it. The... He's oh 40 plus seven dollars seventy-five. That's pretty That's good. short uh, for 40 there. Trelaw's six dollars twenty, by the way. The big question is obviously the dog season hinges on just them winning out. So yep. no, it dogs, doesn't. If well, they win this and lose to the they Giants, just, they yeah. just have to win the one, and they should still be able to stump. Winning out will winning out. They have a bit of momentum. They guarantee would it. even have. Mm. They definitely lock in home ground uh, elimination probably against the Hawks. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Dogs by forty six. Seventeen points. So. Seventeen. Same yeah. as last time. I didn't realize that <laughs> until you read that out. That's all right. Uh, I'll go dogs by thirty five. I think it'll be close for two and a half quarters. All right. Hawthorne, Richmond. Oh, geez. Let's speed through this one. How 40. are Richmond once again getting a primetime free-to-wear game? I know. The 320 is a beautiful this spot is for footy. the oh. third time in about four weeks. I know. What the hell? They're lost. Considering they're not getting any players to their games that don't involve Dustin and Martin playing a 300th game. Yeah. Their worries. fans aren't turning up as much as they used to. And the Hawks fans. I mean, they are up and about, though. Well, Hawks. you could. The showdown could have been this game. Mm, could have been. 42 and a half point favorites, though. 169 and a half points is the over under. Hawthorne could kick that themselves. They could, actually. From <laughs> they what we saw, what we saw against the Blues yeah. last week, where they just went, ah, oh, if we kick straight, we would have put up 150 on them. Uh, the Tigers were inept last week, is to put it nicely. It was St. Uh, Kilda. They are the 17th defense, the 18th offense. I'd probably still go the over because if Richmond get to 50 points, the 120 that Hawthorne <laughs> put up will get you oh, there, right? Geez. Uh, the ins and outs for this one, before we get to the stats, yep. there's no outs listed yet. They've just sort of got the uh, additional. Uh, Hawks will be unchanged. Bench. Finn McGuinness, Jai Sarong, Josh Ward uh, for the Hawks, in for the Tigers, Jack Ross, Matty Coulthard, and Jacob Blight. Uh, the big question, I guess, stats boy, I want to throw to you before the uh, stats. Yep. Are Hawks fans going to show up for this? Absolutely. I was at this game. Absolutely they'll show up. this dusty 300th. Yeah. It was massive. Are there going to be any Richmond fans? No, there? I don't think Richmond fans will turn up. They're, they'll turn up next week. I know we so can 50, say, oh, they're going to turn up. Just like, to see them kick their heads into the tires. Yeah. Hawks fans. I love that. I'll, I'll, I'm so how do you want to see a dead body? This. I'd be happy hey, to go kid. to this game. This, the Hawks are just the most exciting team to watch. Like there'll be so many neutral fans, MCC fans, just going. Talk to I should go to this game. Aura on yesterday's show. The whole team. Is this is aura. team aura. Yeah. So Ginevan doesn't have aura. He's got Riz. <laughs> There's, but I think the team as a whole definitely yes. has aura. Yeah. They're just flying at the moment. It's awesome. Mm. Give us some stats. Yep. Uh, Richmond, they've lost 16 of their last 17 games. Uh, sorry to say that, Tigers fans. But they've won five of the last six against the Hawks. Well, that makes sense yeah. given where the teams have been in the last three no, years. No, but even last year the Hawks were pretty solid. And, no, um, they weren't. They, they were like 13th. Yeah, that's, that's, that's better. Than hey, there's a point, actually. I think, uh, was it SEN had a uh, had a graphic go out. It's like, oh, finally for long-suffering Hawks fans, they get to, I'm like, long-suffering? Yeah. They're not long-suffering long at all. Exactly. Are you They're kidding? Five. Their rebuild's been, like a, like been, like two or three Their rebuild's yeah. been three yeah. years. They were in the finals like three or four years Ugh. ago. Yeah. Anyway. Shut up, Hawks fans. Uh, <laughs> Hawks have covered the line in 12 of their last 14 games as well. So nice. that, that line is big, 42 and a half, but I think we'll all be going over that. Yep. Uh, some stats for the, for the, the players. Play, yeah, player stats. Uh, Jack Gunston, he's had a bit of a career resurgence. He's uh, All the young guys have lifted his spirits. Three-plus goals in these last three home games. And then Dan Rioli, I think you got best on in the coaches' votes the other week against the Saints. He's had 25 disposals in his last Watch five Sam matches. Watch Sam Mitchell tag him. Nice. Nah, I don't think. Yeah. I don't Sam reckon Mitchell I'll tag, tag him. him. They, you don't need to tag him. Yeah, you do. Paul and F for the Tigers. They are one, two, three, Cancuning. Uh, Hawks by yep. 67, Alex. Ooh. Hawthorne by 121. 121. <laughs> the, have we even had 100 this year? Yeah. Or like, I can't even The remember. Swans got done by 100 oh, yeah, two sorry, weeks sorry. ago. Sorry. That's like I was trying to purposely set that up. There was I a... That was a nice was joke. Actually, I like that one. Oh, well, it was an accident, but yeah. yeah, it was great. Don't ever admit that it was an accident. Yeah. Just go, that was the funniest joke I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when the Swans got beaten by 100? Yeah, that was a good time. Good time. Uh, <laughs> your tip there, Stats, man. Uh, Hawks by 58. I think they'll yeah clean them. But I don't know about 100. I think Richmond can sort of put themselves in a shell and not make 100. Uh, West oh, yeah. Coast. Brisbane beat Richmond by 119 earlier this That's year at the right. Gabba. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There's been, been two over 100 and there's two, been, one there's been three awesome. in the 90s. Oh, okay. There was a Frio Melbourne game that was in 90s. Yeah. There's, yeah there's North Melbourne have four of the top 15, but none of the top five. Nah, we, yeah. eight. They limited the damage. Well, yeah, we yeah. limited the damage. They're all over 70, though. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> We're playing for pride. One of them was Gather Round, which I'm glad we, I didn't end up getting a ticket to that. Right. 
the barn burning game of this weekend. <laughs> oh god! I'm genuinely so excited for this game because it's going to be chaos. <clears throat> I can't to, wait to watch it in here with Jim. To be honest, <laughs> this is going to be fun. I have a ready-made excuse to not come in for the Sunday night show. It is my mother-in-law's 70th. My parents will be down for we it. We need as well. some uh, party. Proof, like, document proof, I think. I can give you the invite if you want. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be nice. We'll rock up. Yeah. What, what's, uh, yeah, what's the dinner? Because <laughs> well, that's what could actually just duck around the corner. It's yeah, right that's there. beautiful. But I do want to. Uh, I am fascinated to see what happens because, like Carlton fans, they've been calling out for some of these young dudes that will be playing in this game uh, all season. Uh, but. There's so many changes. There are so many changes. <laughs> I just it's looked ridiculous. at it. I'm, so, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. The Eagles are one and a half point favorites. That's right. The West Coast Eagles, what who have won back to back games for the first time since 2021, will be going for three straight against the Carlton team that was <laughs> second on the ladder and six points clear in second on the ladder in round 17. I think after round 16. This is um, crazy that the Eagles are favorites as well. But Carlton have uh, no players left. So I didn't get the call up, unfortunately. So, you know, I got the stitches out yesterday. All clear there, but still not allowed to go to the gym or run on it for another week. I laughed <laughs> because that'll extend it <laughs> to... Like, ah! I was about to. <laughs> that'll extend it to <laughs> 87 weeks. Like, that was the funniest thing. <laughs> one week. Oh, geez. I better, I better extend that out a bit longer. <laughs> anyway, offensively, the Blues are in second. They're 15th on defense. Which uh, is offensive. I think that's going to... Yeah, they've dropped every week. That's going to get worse and worse and worse. The Eagles are 17th and 16th. Uh, before I do these team stats, man, give us some stats. <laughs> sure. Jim uh, needs five minutes. He needs five minutes just to look. Well, I need to take a breath to give out the uh, ins and outs. Ins and outs could take a while. So the Blues, they've won the last three meetings by an average of 81 points. That was because Harry Mackay and, oh, sorry, Charlie Kerno mainly because she's kicking nine and 10 on their head. So without them, that could be a bit of a worry. Carlton has lost its last three matches against teams ranked, ranked lower than them on the ladder. So that's a bit, well, a bit of a worry. West Coast as well. Alex has been talking about this all day. Uh, they're four and seven at home, which is really good for a, a bottom four team. So yeah, not bad. So the Blues fans should be worried. They also should be worried because Brad Johnson hasn't given up on them for winning the flag yet. Oh. Literally came out 20 minutes ago. Has Sam McClure changed his mind yet? Remember, no, I think, he uh, changed his mind yeah, about three Brad times. Johnson was like, oh, it's just like the dogs, like in 2016. Literally. They after the bye, they went to Worth to play West Coast. And yeah, they got the all these players back. They got, like players off. they got all their players back oh. before the uh, final start, and away they went. Uh, there you go. In for the Eagles with the extended benches: Harry Edwards, Jack Petricelli, and Jack Hutchinson. Oh, is Hutchinson in my super coach? Please, he went play. for the Carlton Blues again. This is the extended bench, so I don't think yes. a couple of these are going to be actually playing because um, I don't think a couple of them actually make the plane. But in for the Carlton Blues, <laughs> so many. Lewis Young. Jackson Binns, Cooper Lord, mid, uh, mid-season draft. Is he related draft to Ollie Lord? Maybe. Uh, Jack Carroll, Corey Durden, Harry Lemmy, Billy Wilson, <laughs> Ashton Moore, Moya, and Dominic Akiwi. So that is my good friend, actually, Ashton Moore. I'm convinced uh, three of these people don't exist. Well, this is This quite is crazy. Jack though. Carroll is the most crea- creative no, dude ever. He does sound like a funny, boring name. point being, like Harry Lemmy. This is <laughs> quite like literally... Harry. The bottom of the barrel of the list of Never the heard AFL of listed players. Yep. Because Harry taking, Lemmy looks 12. He does. He's very small. He's also very tall. He's 201 centimetres. Yeah, he's, bring him in. He's a Good gun. luck, Harry. He's a gun. You Lemmy. <laughs> Some of the ones that actually probably don't make the actual uh, game, I think Dominic Kikui, uh is listed to play the VFL, so I don't know if he actually made the plane, but either way. I just played both. Uh, let's see how they go. <laughs> but Some players do that. The ones that have actually been listed on the field, uh, obviously, Lewis Young straight back in. Uh, he's actually been listed down back along with McGovern. Jackson Bins is on the wing. Weeders. Maddie Kennedy at full forward. They listed <laughs> Maddie Kennedy what? at full forward, which is interesting because I sort he's of like think my heart. the flip him. side might be if you're Carlton to go Patrick Cripps, center half forward, Elijah Holland's in the middle. Let's Doesn't see have how the we tank. go. Let's go, Elijah. Let's go. I was thinking of always actually, Matt Kennedy's actually not that small. <laughs> Okay, uh, Matt Kennedy is full he's forward. One, he's pretty big. So one, he yeah, one, uh, one big, He actually took one of our only contested mm. marks last week. So, but their <laughs> forward line is just hilarious. Zach Williams, Elijah Hollins, Ollie Hollins, Matty Owies, so small. Matty Kennedy, and Jesse Motlock. You've got one medium and the rest are small. <laughs> that is Zach Williams is going to kick eight goals. Have we Point. talked about how that the Wallabies are playing at Optus Stadium on Saturday night? Oh. With it's now I checked up to fifty mils of rain expected. Ooh. So I think a lot of this point behind Carlton naming this team is they're going to go small and they're going to try to go. No, quick. it's because you had no one left. Well, yeah, we've got no other small. big players. There's but two only two <laughs> other people on your list that didn't get named. Yep. That's crazy. I don't know. Imagine who they you're are. the two people on the list that didn't get named. You're like. Oh, 17 players play on the injury list in a way we go. We, we also didn't read out who was out. 
I just realised. We just read who was in. Yeah. So the outs yeah, are Adam there. Saad, Harry <laughs> Mackay, Jack Martin, Lockie Fogarty, Charlie Curnow oh. and Jordan Boyd. So those were the six force changes from last Mostly week. Mostly forwards as well. That we knew they were coming. Uh, yeah. That is the th- last three winners of the Coleman medal. Yep. Or la- yeah, the winners of the last, last three, three Coleman medals. Uh, and a lot of your highest paid like gun players. Yeah. Brutal. It's not great. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what they do if, like, it'd be interesting to see Jackson Bins out there. Uh, yeah, he's, it's going to be fascinating right. to see who actually makes that interchange and actually gets out there to play, uh, because this is whoever actually makes it out there. There are five debutants named in this list. <laughs> five. That's like Gold Coast Suns territory. That's like, like what, what are we doing? What, which team in COVID? Yeah, the Eagles in COVID. Had, That's Ashton. Yeah. No, that was that was like, after COVID. Where that it was twenty twenty two, and they had all yeah. the top ups and yeah. they beat West Coast. Yeah, uh, Collingwood. Sorry. Ashton Moir, Billy Wilson, Dominic Akui, Cooper Lord, Harry Lemmy, all in their debuts. Crazy. Hopefully they'll actually maybe get out there. Uh, the big question is how much do the Eagles win by? Oh, okay. Blues, sad Blues fan. Is that the big question? Yeah. Big question is, is the ground going to be in enough, a good enough <laughs> state to play? <laughs> can, be can we move this to Subiaco? Subiaco still exists. Uh, play at the Wacker. I don't think so. The wacker. Go to the Wacker. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. So my tips, obviously, if we're going to go funniest ones, <laughs> the funniest one would be Carlton winning. <laughs> Wait, so you're changing back. Maybe. So <laughs> the point being... Is this chaos? West Coast winning three on the trot. Yep. No one would have predicted that at the start of the season. Round 17, no one predicted Carlton missing the finals apart from your mate, Jim. Uh, <laughs> this is absolute chaos territories. I can't wait to watch this game. Yeah. It's going to suck. It's going to suck so much. Yeah. And I cannot wait. I'm getting someone to spear tackle Patrick Cripps for chaos. Just because it's like if you stop Cripps, you probably win the game. Yep. Yeah, Harley Reid, I reckon he'll do that. He's He loves starting fights for no reason, so. He'll do that. Right up, stats guy. You are not salty about Harley Reid <laughs> Carlton, at all. Carlton by 12. <laughs> oh, he's back on the Blues train. But you, wait. I've got a big call that later that completely goes against that. But <laughs> I've got two big calls. Don't to worry. be fair, they could win this week and then lose next week and not make it. Uh, yeah, because I think the funniest one would be Carlton actually winning this week. Go, oh, we beat the Eagles. And then you oh, lose to the Saints. And then you lose, lose. to the Saints <laughs> at Marvel. That's the funniest outcome. Yep. So, and it's St. Kilda winning four in a funny, row to finish their us, season. Yeah. I don't know about for you. So I think... Uh, Look, I believe in the young boys. Let's go. Oh, okay. Carlton and Cook. <laughs> uh, Alex. Yeah. West Coast by three. I can't believe I'm tipping West Coast. It's just, like it's because it's at Optus. I think they win. Uh, Stats boy. No, nah, I cannot tip West Coast. I saw them against North last week. I'm still salty about that loss. So I'm going Blues by one. One single point. It's going to be a that'll, gut-wrenching win. But that, that'll that be the funniest thing because we'll be starting a show as soon as that ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jim will be tearing his hair out. It's going to suck. Big call for the weekend ahead. The big call for round 23. The Blues lose and miss the eight. Wait on. I just did say, I just tipped them. (laughs) He said that last week. I still think my entire thing was Blues lose and miss the eight. Uh, You could just say Blues miss the eight. Blues miss the eight still. It all checks out. The fascinating one will be if it's a scrappy, gross game out there at Optus Stadium on Sunday, Jesse Motlop kicks four. Don't mind Zach Williams. Kicks four. Wait, what? Who kicks the other 18 goals they'll need to win? Though? Jeremy Kennedy. McGovern just going to be goalkeeper on the goal line just taking 40 marks. Yeah. Uh, flip side, Zach Williams has his best ever game, kick six. That's a big call. Six. I've seen Zach Williams' best ever game. It was for the Narendra Eagles when he was 16. He had 47 disposals in a grand final. Not bad. It was ridiculous. Oh, we've that heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It was insane. 47 and four, maybe. I think he had 47 <laughs> and four. He was playing <laughs> halfback flank. Oh, my God. Alex, big call. Wizard kicks five. What? But he has, That's actually not much of a surprise against Richmond, right? Oh, five's a lot, though. He, he does have about three or four scoring shots a game. Yeah, just he, had, he had seven shots against Richmond earlier in the year. Let's go, Wizard! What did he kick? What is it, one five? Oh, or something. something. Yeah. He put two of them into the Yarra, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Stats Boy, what's your big call for round 23? I'm saying Danger's back. The last two weeks, he's looked awesome. He had 20 in a goal last week. I'm going to up that to 25 disposals in a goal. The only time he's Oh, had... yeah, that's such a big call oh, for one of the best players ever against be... St. Kilda. All right, he's only had 25 once this year. So I'm saying 25 and a goal, and I think he's just back. So yeah, the miracle of Mogs Creek, they'll call it. Yeah, he's back. He's firing for finals, and that uh, is not a big call. Oh, I, we haven't got many big calls right, so I went a bit, a bit lesser this I mean, week. You got so yours he, right last week. So you went, you went a small. No, call. I didn't. I don't think. Oh, me and Jim. Well, then Jim and I you got ours right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we went two or three. You yeah. missed out. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that'd be right. Week. Classic stats, boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one is yeah, like whether or not basically Adelaide running over the top of court. Yeah, uh, Jordan Dawson gets another showdown medal. Actually, yeah, that's a big call from you too. Yeah. Jason Horn Francis kicks three goals and the power still lose. Ooh, Interesting. That's well, a good one. Okay. Keep an eye on what are we looking at for round 23, the Swans forward line Ooh. at Marvel. We know that the Essendon defense isn't much chop, but of how do you w- think this, like, this is more of a question of like how much I want to look 
and see how they perform. Like we saw last time they played, yeah. aerial ping pong, bang, 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 bang. How does this Swans forward line perform where they've sort of fallen over the last couple of weeks? Last week was chaos until the fourth quarter. It was Heaney who lifted them over. It was Chad. You don't have Chad this week. What happens? Um, I'm not as concerned as I would be against a couple of other teams because one-on-one contests in the AFL, Briz, uh, sorry, Essendon have three of the worst 10 defenders in the league. Hayden McLean, very good mm-hmm. contested mark. Logan McDonald leads great and Amadi's got the spring. It's just whether or not they can work it all out together. They've all popped up, kicked a goal here and there. But if they kick two or three each, it's game over, but it's more Luke Parker, Will Haywood. He, Haywood, sort of yeah, two. Haywood needs to fire It's, it's yeah. a big Haywood game again. Yep. yep. Ben Mackay up against Logan, maybe? Uh, maybe against maybe McLean. Amadi. And then Laverde Laverde probably against Amadi or Logan. Nice. Other things we're keeping an eye on. The Dockers' structure on the road and also their fourth quarter. Yeah, the fourth quarter is a big one. Could be over by then. Could be. Lions of the G. Just keep an eye on it. Big time. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated to see what happens there. Uh, The size of the beers (laughs) and the offenses of both sides of the showdown. I just Yeah, you lost me at the size of the beers. Beautiful. Is there a Keep an eye on it. I want one of those. That's just great. Is there a fight? Ooh, in the stands, yes. Yeah. Uh, on the field, mm, yes. <laughs> I was like, this box. game needed Sam Power Pepper to line up Rochelle. Oh. Well, you were watching Barry Hall fighting highlights. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just, <laughs> just to get your cheat up for the show. <laughs> uh, Cats dealing with the Saints D. That's going to be one massive thing to keep an eye on because once you obviously make it to the finals, we know how they go. Yep. This is at Marvel, one of their least favorites. Bit of a places. weird game. It's yeah. a weird matchup. Mm. How do the Cats deal with the Saints defense? Cherry in the ruck oh, against saying, the dogs. I don't care if we lose by 100 north. I'm excited to watch Tristan Cherry tear it up in the ruck. So is he going up against what, Sam Darcy? Rory Who? Lobb Rory as well. Lobb? Who they name in the ruck? I'm actually, let's find out even, stats yeah, let's have because a look, they have named Sam Darcy. Interesting. Ooh, that is not good for Sam Darcy. He's a good forward, but not a good ruck. And he's, Cherry is just so much bigger than anyone the dogs have. So he's going to have a field day. Big super coach game. Keep an eye on Michael Voss turning into Magneto. <laughs> How is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be mine games. Have the cards. Over the show cards. field. Uh, he's going to have to move some magnets, is Vossi, oh, right. I reckon. So he's going to go full Magneto. He's going to be just like <laughs> swirling it around. I don't know if you've seen X-Men, was it, 97? Is that right, Producer Gerald? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he's like, yeah, i got Gerald no idea. Out. He's like, shut up, Red Man. I want to uh, go home. Magneto is awesome in that new one. So Yeah, the new one's sick, yeah. Anyway, Michael Voss turns into Magneto, changes the <laughs> magnets, and pulls a win out of nowhere. There you go. Finally, Super Coach Vibes tips, thoughts for this week. This is a chaotic week for anyone who's doing Super Coach, obviously. So oh, I'm cooked. Uh, I'm all right, I think. We did the Monday show, Stats Boy and I. We did. And it has gotten substantially worse since then. Mm, uh, she's injuries. all being named not on the uh, – obviously Warner. not playing. Uh, Warner, Warner being help, yeah. out. English. Tim English being out. Uh, Sheasel is a rolling donut for me, but with Hugo Garcia out there, I might be able to swing some nice. magnets around myself. I got not Billy Dowling has been named as an emergency, which gives me, or on the extended bench, which gives me some hope. Yeah. You um, just, Adelaide, just, uh, you uh, got Adelaide and just take yeah, out some legs to get him, I haven't got much there. get him on the field. Uh, replacing Charlie Kerno was a big part of that. Um, Matt Kennedy is obviously an interesting one because they've named him at full forward though. So James Peatling was the other one. To be fair, he'll get a bit of the ball. There'll be lots of All I know is you're putting your captain on McGovern or Cherry and your vice captain's going on like Heaney, Errol, or maybe even Zorko. You can even vice captain Cherry if you want. You can go vice captain Cherry. Vice captain Cherry into Captain McGovern. That'd be the play. Yeah, I don't have either of them, unfortunately. I'm Cherry. I'm leaning to, I don't even know who I'm leaning towards. I'm probably going to go, whoa, Errol uh, on Friday night with the VC into my beloved at home, Noah Anderson. Yeah. That's I don't know. Actually, Anderson. Flanders isn't a bad show. Yeah, that. I said yeah. Flanders. I'm going Cherry as captain with, I think, Errol as vice. I'm going to go Flanders into – oh, I'm so torn. So the most traded out player is Sheasel because obviously it's the pointy end of the yeah. season. He might not play again. Yeah. So uh, I haven't got trades. 5,169 yeah, – uh, 167 people still had trades and they traded him out. Clary has been traded out the next most. Who was still holding him? Uh, me. Oh. I traded – no, I've still got him. He's on my bench now. Oh, no. Uh, injured. So that sucks. Maybe I could actually root. No, it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> let's see how it goes. It really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, any other trade-in vibes there? If you've got one trade left or anything, stats? No, nah, i got no trades. I'm sad. But I think I should have a full team, which is very lucky. I've got Lawson Humphreys on my bench, so yeah. he comes in for Shears. I'm very happy with that. That's exactly what I've sort of done with the uh, – Clayton Oliver news. I've just moved Lawson Humphreys in. He's, he's uh, good, with yeah. With Kerno being out as well, just moving Kennedy. Maybe I'll actually instead trade out 
Clary and just do some swing around just in case Charlie plays in the uh, final round. Nice. Uh, amazingly enough, 1,855 people had enough money to trade in Tristan Cherry this Yeah. Week. How the hell? That's ridiculous. They got 300 from? grand left over. What? But you got zero You can't trade. take it with you. What are you doing? <laughs> no, he, he, you can. You can. You can just cash it out. It's great. Does it roll over in the next year? Yeah. I hope so. No, just, it just, you can just get into your bank account. Amazing. Yeah. All right, there you go. That is it. The AFL Today Show for this week. We'll be back on Sunday night for a very distraught gym show, no doubt, as they lose to the Eagles. <laughs> distraught oh, Alex show after we lose to Essendon. I made I'll my piece. Safe. I made my piece last week. I went, NFL season is starting. We're on. I don't <laughs> care. I'm on it. Carlton is just like off in the rearview mirror. The Unless Patriots, they win this week. It's just going to be horrible. But I'll be back full blown flaggers if they do win. Uh <laughs> But we'll be back on Sunday night for a big, big, big round 23 wrap. Thank you to the Ding Guy, Alex, over there. Cheers, Jim. And to the Stats Boy. Thank you. Remember to smash a like across all the socials for AFL Today. Good stuff. Of course, it is Aussie Rules Today on Facey. Go check it out. You'll see all the videos and all the good stuff. But it is YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X, all the good stuff there. Of course, you can also get around the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, hold all tickets. And of course... Launching next week, the AFLW Today Show, starring our good friend, Bryony Dawson, and <laughs> that guy, Alex Donnelly. Yeah, definitely just hosting and letting Bryony steer the ship because they are awesome. Yep. You bets to believe it. Uh, subscribe to Sarah like all those shows on your podcast app or we'll fight you. Get around them on YouTube as well. Yep. Get around them like, I don't know, who, get actually, to be honest, so Ashton Wiles making more, Moya, there you go. Uh, making his AFL debut presumably this week. Uh, yep. Get around them like a bunch of Auskick kids. <laughs> get around their AFL heroes when they actually rock up to an Auskick on a cold, blustery Friday night Good fun. Good in fun. the middle of a cold, wintry season. <laughs> he, Jesse Motlop, and Corey Durden were there with us in Brunswick. The squid loved it. He met Jesse Motlop. He was just like, this is awesome. It's great. Who was that, Dad? <laughs> I'm like, it was Jesse Motlop, buddy. And the other guys... You probably don't need to know their names, but he does now, so they all loved it on him. All right, that's it. We'll catch you on Sunday night for more AFL today. Till then, look after yourselves. Go Blues and footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.